dead, but the Elohim of the living, you are therefore greatly mistaken. You don't understand anything, is, is what he's saying to them. And yet the scriptures tell us that we shall know him, for we shall be like him, right? Are we going to be like him before we went to the execution stake or afterwards? After the resurrection. After. Okay? We go back and study the scriptures then and see what he's like and what he's going to be. And what do we see him like in Revelation? Standing there with a white garment <laughs> stretched from the palms of the hand down to the soles of the feet, you know, girdled with a gold band, eyes flaming, eye, you know, hair is white, you know. Feet look like burnished copper, right? Not somebody to mess with. <laughs> and we're going to be like him. <clears throat> when you get time, go back in there sometime and just read in Samuel. And it talks about Samuel's mighty men and some of the things that they did. David's mighty men. I mean, well, in Samuel, talking about David's mighty men. But... <clears throat> one of them, you know, I think his name, you know, was mean something. I forget what the name was, but something like he went out and stood like in the, in the middle of the field, and he killed 800 men trying to come at him. He fought, and he fought. Got to the point of his hand, they had to peel his hand off his sword because he couldn't even turn loose because of what he went through. And it lists the mighty men of David, of the beloved, who loved him that much. And then later on, David just sitting around thinking, boy, I sure would like to have a drink of water from that pool down there, so on and so forth. And what three of them do? They got up and went in, got the water, brought it back. He said, here it is. Mm -hmm. David wouldn't drink it. Why? He said, no, if I drink this, he said, this, this water represents the blood of these men who went to get it for me. I can't drink that. I'm not worthy. And he poured it out as an offering to Yahweh. It was worth more to him than himself. But who are these mighty people that it's talking about? In the book of Daniel, it talks about in the end time when the false messiah and the antichrist comes and everything, and it talks about those who know Yahweh will do what? Great exploits. Why? Because they know the word, they believe in the word, and they use the word in their everyday life, and it becomes a habit to them, and that's what they do. And when somebody comes against you and you're in the habit of walking and talking and speaking this word, what do you do? You just look at them and speak the words of Yahweh and what happens? They fall backwards. They, fall backwards. <laughs> they came to Yahweh and asked who he was. And if he was so, he said, I am. And what happened to him? They fell backwards. Okay. Going back to Mark. I didn't mean to get off on that. but <clears throat> Verse again. Verse 20 says, He is not the God of the dead, but the Elohim of the living, you are therefore greatly mistaken. Verse 28, Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the, most Bibles have the word first in it. The Greek word there is, is the word protos. It's a number 4413. It actually means the foremost in importance. So what is the foremost or the most important? Not just the first. But what's the most important? Yehoshua answered him. The first, foremost, 44.30. He used the same word that the one asked. You don't use and ask him questions. He said the foremost, protos, most important. Of all the commandments is. Shema Yisrael. Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Echad. Is what he would have said, right? From Deuteronomy chapter 6. And you shall love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the foremost commandment. This is the most important of all. To know that Yahweh is one, and you're supposed to love Him with all your heart, mind, and soul. How can you do that and not do what He tells you to do? Okay. How can you love Him without obedience? And how many places in First John does it talk about? Here's the love of Yahweh. It is obeying Him, obedience to Him, right? I don't know how people can just totally, you know, skip over all this stuff. Ignore it. Like it doesn't matter. Verse 31, and the second, the number for that word second, there's a the number 1208. In the Greek, it's a word. <laughs> hmm. 
Bueno. Verse 31, the second. <coughs> number 1208 is the word deuteros. <laughs> Where we get to the number Deuteronomy. You see, these titles come from the Greek, and they're trying to say it's a second law or a second giving of something, right? <laughs> The second like it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. <coughs> there is no other commandment greater than these. You hear what he's really saying? The foremost of all. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, Elohekah, Yahweh is one. There ain't but one. How many times as we studied Torah, did Yahweh say something to the people, and then after he said he would say, Ani, Yahweh, I am Yahweh. It's like he's trying to get them to understand. I'm, you know, I'm the only one. There ain't no other. It's just me. If anybody ever sees this tape or video or something, it's not that I think that I'm so good. I'm just trying to illustrate, you know, what the word is saying. I know that I'm not him. But back in Mark, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I have seen people, you know, make accusations against somebody else when they were telling a story and using the thing like I am God and it really wasn't trying to, you know, say that. They were just illustrating a story anyway. But people make up stuff about it. <laughs> but in verse 32, so the scribe said to him, well, <laughs> well said, teacher. Can you imagine him saying this to the creator of the universe? You have spoken the truth, for there is one Yahweh and there is no other but he. Now who came to him and said this? A scribe. One who knew the Torah. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the soul, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Yahweh never wanted to sacrifice and burnt offering in the first place. He wanted obedience. The burnt offerings and sacrifice were just there because he knew the people were going to disobey and break the law. And he gave a way to cover it for their sins to be covered until Messiah should come. So when Yehoshua saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of Yahweh. And after that, no one dared question him. This, whoever this scribe was, had a pretty good understanding of what it's all about. People say, you know, oh, yeah, well, all we got to do is, you know, uh, love the Lord, you know, with all our heart and soul. But he said, wait a minute, the first of all is Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad. That's the most important. How many times do you hear Christians repeating that? That's because they don't believe him. <clears throat> Verse 35, then Yehoshua answered and said while he taught in the temple, how is it that the scribes say that the Mashiach, the anointed of Yahweh, is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of Holiness, right? Yahweh said to my Adonai. You notice there that one is all capital L-O-R-D, and the other one is capital L, little O-R-D. It's going back to the, to the common practice of, of using Yah the you know, Lord capitalized for Yahweh, and then little Lord for Adonai. So it's saying, Yahweh said to my Adonai, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. He said, therefore David himself calls him Adonai. How is he then his son? If David called him master, how can he be his son? That's his, you know, that's what I'm trying to, <clears throat> he's asking him, right? Now who was the one asking these questions? Messiah himself, Yehoshua, was asking these questions, right? If somebody knew what the prophets and Samuel and, and Psalm said, they could have answered it. David was speaking to Yehoshua and calling him my master, knowing that he was going to be born to him in the flesh and then die and then be resurrected. David foresaw that. So the mm -hmm. Spirit spoke to him through that. That's how he can say that. You don't think he was calling him El uh, Elohim? The creator? Well, Yahweh said to my Elohim, my Adonai. Yeah, it could have been any one of those. I'm not going to get into it. All we know for sure is that in the Greek, it's got the word for Lord, Kurios, okay? 
trying to make an, you know, a, a guess as to what word was actually translated from. I don't know. Creator just makes it known that it is Well, I understand that. But what he's saying right here, and David said by himself, he's not really talking to the Creator, he's just trying to say to him, Yahweh said to my master. What he's really saying is that, you know, he is my master, and yet how is that going to be his son? Because your son's not normally your master. That's, I think, more of an importance than just, you know, yeah, okay. could be Creator. But, but that's what he's saying. How can David say that? What did David understood? And it's Messiah asking the questions, right? Verse 37, Therefore David himself calls him Master, or Adonai, or Elohim, or Creator. I think it's more like Master, you know? How is he then his son? If he's even calling him Master, how can it be his own son? And the common people heard him gladly. Scribes and Pharisees and leadership didn't, but the common people did. Right? Go to Psalm 110. Verse 1. Yahweh said to Adoni, the number is 136. <laughs> it's not Elohim, it's Adoni. My master, Yahweh said to my master, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Yahweh shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. Now this is the Psalm of David, right? You see, that's why that's what Messiah is saying when he asks him this question. He said, how can David say this? How is it that the scribes say that the Mashiach is the son of David? How come you all teach that, okay? For David himself said by the Spirit of Yahweh, the Holy Spirit, Yahweh said to my master, by Adonai, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore David himself calls him Adonai, our master. How is he then his son? Am I confusing the issue here? I don't mean to be. I'm trying to help us understand that what Messiah is actually talking to the people about is, is you go out here and you, you call on, you know, the son of David, and yet David himself even calls him master. Well, how can he call him master if, and, and, and still be his son? Yeah. Okay? Because he saw him before he became the flesh. He knew. Doesn't the scripture say that Yahweh says, I will manifest myself to those who love me? Did David love him? Did David love his law, his Torah? <laughs> and Yahweh manifested himself to him. David, when he was forgiven with the thing of Bathsheba, you know, and the sin and everything, and he cried out, if you'll forgive me, I what? I will become a teacher. My word's not his. Go, uh, Second Samuel, chapter twenty-three. <clears throat> <clears throat> chapter twenty-three. He said, "Now these." or the last words of David. Thus says David, the son of Yesi. Thus says the man raised up on high, the anointed of the Elohim of Yaakov and the sweet psalmist of Israel. The spirit of Yahweh spoke by me. The breath of Yahweh spoke by me and his word was on my tongue. The word of Yahweh came to him and he spoke those words that he said that Yahweh spoke to him by his Holy Spirit, the breath, the set apart word. Yahweh gave him the word and he spoke the word. What is the Spirit here? It's the word. And by that word, David knew who he was. By that word, David knew who he was going to be. By that word, David knew what was going to come to pass. All the people back in Mark that he's talking to right now, 
How can David say that? Because he was speaking by the word that Yahweh had given him. That's how he can know. We can know what's going to come to pass ahead of time because of the word that Yahweh gives to us when we study this word. <clears throat> I guarantee you, everybody knows a whole lot more about what this word says than they did a year or two ago, don't they? Mm -hmm. Are we begin to learn something about it? <clears throat> then in verse 38, Then he said to them, In his teaching, Beware of the scribes who desire to go around in long robes. They love the greetings in the marketplaces, the best seats in the synagogues, and the best places at feast. Who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. These will receive greater condemnation. Does that mean that there can be greater condemnation for those who really appear to be something else when they're really not? Still condemnation, but it's going to be greater, greater degree, right? That not many of you become teachers because you're going to be judged, you know, a lot harsher. If you teach anything, how can you teach anything other than what we always word says? If you not teach what the word says, then who is it? Yeah, coming from yourself or from Sostan or the adversary or whatever, but it's sure not what Yahweh's word says. Verse 41, Now Yehoshua sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury, and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which make a quadrant. I don't know what a mite or a quadrant either one is, but I bet it's little. <laughs> Not a whole lot. Because she was poor. So he called his disciples and said to them, he called his disciples and said to them, he called them to see what this woman was doing. He wanted them to know and to understand, right? Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. Why would he say that? What did this woman do? Gave all she had. For they all put in out of their abundance. But she out of her poverty put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. It never tells us whether they, she was rewarded for that or not. I wonder why. Well, let me ask you a question. If she wasn't rewarded later, do you think that Yehoshua would have pulled her up as an example and specifically right. made it a point for all the world right. to see for generations to come to look at this woman? Right. And probably back at that time after he said that too, you know, things would have happened, right? We'll cut it off there for today. Y'all been good. <laughs> and we'll pick up there in chapter 13 of Mark next week. We don't have very much farther to go. Uh, about four more chapters in Mark. We'll pick up in, in Exodus chapter 6. But I thank you for your, for your time and your patience. Mm.